Hello, my name is Ebony. Um, my social media name is Songbird Echo or Songbird E C O. Um, I was just coming on today to talk about. I keep hearing uh, this theme pop up in my brain, and from stuff I've watched and things of that nature, and things that I've heard or conversations I just recently had. And this is um, keeps popping up that people who get married and then you find out that they're like a totally different person than who you thought you married. <sighs> my goodness, my goodness. So I've been thinking about this all day. I'm like, oh my gosh. I honestly don't even really know what to say about that. So this is actually, that's actually one of my biggest fears <laughs> in life. And that's on like mama. No. Um, that's a life. I've thought about this a lot because I, I've heard females say to me, and I've seen it on TV and things of that nature, but I've heard females say to me, like, I that they don't really show a dude who they are. They kind of, like, mimic whoever he's saying that he wants them, you know, what he wants in a woman. Um, and I always thought, oh, that's got to be torture trying to keep up that facade. Uh uh. I ain't gonna be able to tell. Focus fully. But, um. I gotta put my lip balm in my pocket. Do I? My perfume in my pocket. Hand sanitizer in my pocket. <laughs> my shea butter in my pocket. And my hand soap in my pocket. Okay, super random. Where is my chapstick? Oh, it is in my wallet. Shout out to my girl, Don Quetta. She came out with the Peaceful Selection. So this is my, um, the premium selection. I like this one the most so far because it just slides on like, bam! And I don't have to do too much with it. But it's a little glossy, so she does have a different, um, a regular line that probably will appeal more uh, more to men and things like that but anyway so that's uh just letting you guys know about that it's all natural lip balm and i love it so i'm glossy now i don't have to keep licking, licking my lips <laughs> okay um but anyway that um that always baffled me because i said who wants to live like that like and then you have to let the other shoe drop like and sucks for these, I used to think, man, sucks for these men that these women are, like, faking them out. You know what I'm saying? And just acting like they're this type of person and they're not. Like, oh, I, I like to cook, but they really don't like to cook. Or um, whatever it is, <sighs> blew my mind. And I was disgusted by that. And so I used to be able to say, I remember, uh, ex-boyfriend used to always say, it ain't a lot of good dudes out there, you know what I'm saying? Ain't a lot of good dudes out there. You lucky you got me. Like, um, dude, you know it ain't a lot of good females out there too. They will straight pull the wool over your eyes until they get what they want. Like now, deal with that. <laughs> I'm like, I know. Okay, because they've told me. So that that's always been a scary thing for me. Um, so one thing that I personally like I learned, I know that even me, so I I don't think I've ever been the type of female that would um, put on a front, like fake the funk, um, act like somebody else. But what I do have to be honest about is the fact that I never was um, fully my authentic self. And so that was something I discovered um, when dealing with my therapist and um, this guy that I was really into. And, um, in our communication about that situation, because I couldn't understand why I couldn't get it. I was having a hard time getting over it. And I was like, what's the deal? Like, I was never really a hundred percent sure about do anyway. Um, there were things about him I didn't like, and I never met anybody that was so much like me because I'm, I'm very different. Um, very very different to myself so I don't know maybe everybody else thinks I'm the same I don't know I think I'm very different so I had never met anybody any dude that was like me before and so he just reminded me so much of myself the things that we way we would think and all that stuff and so um 
I was really intrigued by that, but I had the hardest time getting over it. Um, but she brought it to my attention in our communication about that, that I was not being my true authentic self because I was still trying to hide parts of me that I was insecure about. And then shout out to Robin that just brought back to my memory. Robin Kiera, check her out. Robin, K-I-E-R-R-A, I believe. Um, she has a website and she, um, I just watched her YouTube video this morning. Um, I believe it's about a time that she shot her shot. Um, but that just brought that back to my memory because she said something about insecurities. Um, but I still had major insecurities that I wasn't trying to let anybody see, period. Um, and even though my friends would say they those are stupid, that was like stupid insecurity. Um, it was still, it was still my insecurity. So I was never my true authentic self because I was, and that's in my life period because, you know, so one thing that was major insecurity and it, it kind of made me monitor the way, what I wore um, and monitor what I wore, how I wore things. Like, I liked certain things, but I would never, like, um, admit I liked certain things because I was, like, I I did not like my feet. Let's be real. There was never anything wrong with my feet. Um, and I was always so insecure about my feet because the boys I grew up with used to just make fun of me calling Flintstone toes and all that stuff so I was always really insecure about my feet and it didn't get any better once I had some too tight Sacconis on and my mom wouldn't buy me any more gym shoes and then I had the little um the little calluses on my toes I said oh I got a callus on my toe oh my god I'm ugly I got ugly feet oh my god and then it was just a wrap I was the worst at I would wouldn't wear no flip-flops I was, oh my God, like it was nuts. I would, it dictated my life. It legit dictated m massive portions of my life. The fact that I did not want people to see my toes. I wore, I made sure I had socks all the time when I went over somebody's house. Like I was just very insecure. So that was one thing I was always trying to, I was always at that point trying to be perfect. Have this like somewhat perfect image. Um, but if I had was being real, I'm just not perfect. Like it is what it is. Like, I, and the thing is, I had to learn that the things that I considered flaws are things that make me unique. Now, I'm like, my feet got character. I don't care what y'all talking about. <laughs> but it took me a long time. Like, um, I was listening to what podcast was that? I think it's called Painkillers. Adrian Davis, and I don't know. The, I can't remember the dude's name, but I think his name is Boonham on instagram um but their first episode of painkillers podcast and he was saying something about um to they were talking about like when you don't care about what other people think or say or whatever and like how you get past what other people think and say about you and he gave an example of some dude um he said some dude said I think it was adrian davis that said this some dude um told him to go into the mall go in the middle of the mall lay on the floor and make snow angels um for like five minutes and then get up and walk out of the mall and he said people will be laughing at you pointing at you think you crazy blase blue blah 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 and i'm like i was realizing to myself i care less and less about what people say and think so i said well did i have a moment like that and it was clear shoes come on clear shoes so this moment I had where I um I went I, I bought these shoes they was bomb to me I was like oh I gotta have these shoes I said I'm I gotta I gotta find the courage to wear them like these shoes bomb there was some black shoes um they were clear shoes but they had like a little black patent leather like like snake skin I guess toe and then on the back of the heel was the black as well the rest of the shoe was clear I was like, oh god put it on i was like oh you're so sexy on my feet I, 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 where are you? uh so i bought them and i said one of the one of these days i'm gonna get the courage where am i show my friends my um two my two closest friends my best friend michaela and don quetta and i showed them i said look these shoes i'm gonna eventually wear them one day like i'm just gonna take a picture of me wearing them 
next thing I know, I just went ahead and found some courage. I put them on. I said, I'm not doing this no more. I'm not about to keep walking around here worried about what other people think. I can't do it. I can't breathe. This has nothing breathe. to do with George <laughs> Floyd. <laughs> this is in regard to a mannequin challenge my breathe. friend told me about okay. her and her family doing well before inside, the incident with George Floyd to happened. Hear her tell the story is hilarious. But anyway, um, I said, I can't do this no more. So I wore the clear shoes to church and I sing praise and worship. So I stand up front, man. And I was like so nervous. But at the same time, I was like, you're doing it now. May, may as well get over it get over it boom forget about it like okay yeah you feel like everybody looking at them probably nobody's paying attention to them at all because i noticed i would point out things about myself i'd be like oh my god my skin is the worst so like i had a breakout recently my god um oh my skin is the worst i got the worst skin my friend said girl i didn't even notice you had like any kind of bumps on your face or like marks on your face at all really like, I never noticed that until you kept saying it. And then I really looked and I was like, oh, okay. Like, it's not the end of the world. I was like, oh, my God. I keep pointing out insecurities, things that are I'm insecure about to people. And then now they're finally noticing them. Like, everybody who's seen my feet, they're like, why are you insecure about your feet? Like, get over it. Like, they're not even bad. I'm like, oh, my gosh. What are you? Like, y'all just saying that because y'all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> y'all love me y'all just saying that because y'all love me but y'all know these feet is hideous they ugly uh. i said i can't i can't live like this no more i can't i can't do it no i refuse so yeah the it was the clear heels experience for me and so i wore the um the door i'm in the garage but still um it was the clear heels experience for me that was like the breakthrough moment that allowed me to start really living my life in my authenticity and stop being so afraid of what other people think and worried about what they got to say about anything about me, whether it be the way that I speak, because I used to have a problem with that, because people would say I talk white and I'm like, what? Okay, you sound stupid. Um, or the fact that I, I've gained weight, like I'm a size 16 women's now. I ain't got no hips, but <laughs> I'll be filling it out. But you know what I'm saying? Um, I still, I still uh, looks good and rocks it though. But it's, it was an adjustment. Oh my gosh. A major adjustment when I finally realized and came to the conclusion, like I'm a plus size, plus size girl now. Like my God, when did this happen? Um, but if it's about my weight, if it's about my skin, if it's, I don't care. And I noticed that I am the person who puts myself down the most. I was the person who was concentrated on these things the most. Like, when nobody coming up to me saying, girl, you know, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. It was me, like, looking in the mirror and saying, oh, my gosh, I know people are judging me about this or that or whatever. Girl, if you don't go on about your business, I, I got so, oh, I'm telling y'all, I had to get sick of myself. So I say all that to say that clear that clear heel experience changed my life it was what i needed to move past concerning myself about what other people thought which then let me operate in my true self in my true essence in my authentic my most authentic um person that i am in my authenticity um and that means the world to me like the fact that i and and not to say that things don't come up in my brain because the enemy will always try and throw something at you like oh yeah they looking at you dude go about your business <laughs> go on go on like i i don't believe that and even if it is true so what and i found myself like if i even like thought it would come up in my mind where oh they looking at your feet I would turn my feet at an angle, make sure you can see my whole entire foot because that's how, like, I just don't care. Like, read it and weep. Like, look at it and lay off of it. Like, and if you got something to say, say it. And if you do have something to say, you're immature and you need to figure out, like, why are you, why are you so um, ready to point out my flaws? Like, is it because you dislike yourself? 
the things we dislike in people the most generally are the things that we dislike about ourselves. Like, so if you so, so busy studying my business or what I got going on that's so wrong about me, quote unquote, then I am led to believe that this is really about something different some insecurity that you have and it ain't got nothing to do with me and I don't have time to entertain it so you can feel the way you want to feel about me and think what you want to think about me but at the end of the day I don't care I don't care enough I don't care enough to allow it to affect the way I feel about myself anymore and I don't care enough to allow it to affect my day like you and your opinion makes no difference in my day my day is still going to go on I'm still going to say mm, today I'm going to have a great day like it doesn't even matter so um I I think about the fact that you know I could have married somebody who was not comfortable enough in their own skin like some people they put on this front they put on this face as if they are completely confident in who they are and they don't care about what other people think but they do and you could tell it by their actions and i don't want to tear you down and and make you feel less than but sometimes i just want to say you know why do you care like i you know you try and engage people and and have a conversation with people and say why does why does it matter to you that you are important to these people you know and things of that nature that help you to know like they're not really comfortable 100% with themselves because they wouldn't care about who this person is or rubbing shoulders with this person or um, caring about the fact that this person knows them and thinks that they're important to them. Like, you know, you're so pressed about who you're friends with. Um, I'm friends with this celebrity. I'm friends with this person. Oh, yeah, I can call them right now. See, watch, watch me call them. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Like, why do you care? And that, that one was one of my red flags on somebody that I was dating that I really, really liked. But I was like, oh, they care so much about being important to other people who they deem to be important. And it was killing me. I was like, I, I don't care like who this person is, what their celebrity status is, A list, B or C, or if they're nobody to you. Like, I don't care but you care and that bothers me because I don't want to raise my children and this is what it came down to I don't want to raise my children okay I gotta try and finish this quickly but um my bottom line was is that I don't want to raise my children um worrying about caring about other people's thoughts and about them and I want to raise healthy whole children like I want to do my best to I want to be my best self to raise healthy whole children so that took me getting healthy and whole like I'm not perfect um in this walk i'm still learning and i'm still growing and i'm still embracing myself more and more but i'm i'm walking in my authenticity every time a thought comes up in my brain and says no that's not good enough or they're uh they're gonna think this about you or whatever it is negative that's coming up in my mind i'm like it really doesn't matter like it's not my business what they think or feel about me it's really not my business as long as they don't bring it over to me and try and make it my business um then we have no we have no issue we have no issue at all and then at the end of the day my goal is to then you know point out to them if if you have a problem with me if you want to bring something to me about me and it's not affecting you then i need you to know that you are important too and you matter too because i don't want to tear you down i don't want to you know talk negative about you dog you um dog walk you whatever i don't want to do that i i want to help you realize you hate yourself you dislike yourself and i need you to figure that out why i figure out why you dislike yourself because you're disliking yourself is causing you to then come at me and attack me and feel like it's necessary for you to bring to my attention what's going on with me and i'm fully aware of what's going on with me trust me i'm the first one i'm the harshest critic to myself so i don't need your you to bring it to me um now if it's in good clean i'm just trying to help you live the holy life sis i see you messing up and it's like correcting an action okay but at the end of the day if it's just you being negative and you just trying to tear me down then i i don't need that but if you want to bring it to me prayerfully my response is not a negative response but a response that will help lift you up help you grow help you build 
So, um, anybody that I deal with, I, I don't even plan on getting into a relationship with anybody who has not done the work of becoming healthy and whole. Because then if I'm not, if you're not healthy and whole, then you still don't know who you are and you're still putting up a facade and you're still not being true to who you are. I was just watching a podcast with a husband and wife. I listened to the wife more so. I never really felt fond of the husband, but I listened to the wife more so because um, she seems like she really loves God and that's, I'm here for that. Um, but she was saying how her husband, like about nine, 10 years down the line, he's different. Like he's the flip flop of who he was when they first got together. Oh my gosh. Do you know how terrifying that is? Like, so any red flags I'm seeing, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I can't be desperate to get married. And I'm not saying anybody did that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not even talking about them anymore. I just brought them up solely. And y'all probably don't even know who I'm talking about. Or you might know who I'm talking about. But um, I brought them up solely just to point out the fact that people be flipping on you. And I don't... Mm -mm, no, 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 no. So I'm coming with the most authentic me possible. Um, I am going to change. Because I'm going to keep growing and going forward. Um, I have no plans of going backwards. So I do want someone who is on the same path and who's done the work and who has discovered who they are and are comfortable in their own skin and want to be the best individual possible for themselves, for their children, for the people who are watching them. Um, because that's the only way I'm going to feel comfortable that I'm getting, I'm going to get somebody who's going to grow with me, but that's not going to flip flop and change because it's too easy to go backward. It's too easy to go backward. And I don't want to. I love where I am in God. I want to go higher in God. And I want to become the